Welcome to Introduction to Theater Design at Motlow State Community College. I'm your professor, Emily Seal. That's my family on the far left there. That's my husband, Davis. He also works at Motlow. He's in the marketing department. That's my son, Elliot. Um, He's a one and done baby, <laughs> just uh, the one son there. And then these are our cats. Um, this one's Bill and that one's Ted. They are rambunctious little kitties, so you might hear them in the background of this lecture. Um, I've been a professor at Motlow for 13 years as I'm recording this. I love Motlow. I love my students. I particularly love my theater majors. So thank you so much for choosing to participate in theater elective credit at Motlow State Community College. Um, I have an MFA in theater performance from the University of Southern Mississippi. I also have uh, costumed um, professionally and obviously for those years of theater productions that we do at the Moore County campus. So um, I love costuming, I love sets and painting and things, uh, but again, my terminal degree is in performance. So several of these lectures are not my own voice. I don't pretend to be an expert at lighting or color theory, um, so I am leaning on other professionals, um, such as Tucker Bottom, who's doing our lighting design, um, my friend Cody Stockdale, who is a fantastic set designer. He also recently wrote Waffle House, the musical. I'm looking forward to seeing that, hopefully um, catch on nationwide. Um, and I uh, also have a guest lecture from someone I don't know personally, uh, but who's a established costumer at UC Irvine, and um, I found that through the library database, and um, of course she's worked in LA and things, and while I do have a little bit of experience with film, I know a lot of you, that's something that interests you, so um, I like to subsidize where I can, uh, because that's not per se my area. Um, so uh, if you are interested in connecting with Motlow Theater as a program, if you're not already, hopefully if you're taking this, you're a theater major and you've already been in some productions, but you can find us on Instagram or Facebook as I record this. We have a presence there. If you just um, search Motlow Theater, you can see some of my designs and some of the things that our department um, put together. Of course, they're not all my designs, <laughs> obviously. Every fall, we have a children's drama. Um, as I record this, in the fall, we're doing uh, The Spell of Sleeping Beauty. Um, we've done it at Motlow before. We usually try to recycle and do some of those plays um, to save money. We have a limited budget as a community college. This was Madagascar, the musical. They were singing, I like to move it, move it. Great fun. We bus in thousands of area kids uh, last fall we did uh, Aesop's Fables and we had almost 4,000. We only have 255 seats in our theater which we'll cover further in the semester. Um, so we have 15 performances, lots of area children getting to be exposed to theater for free. Huge community service project. I'm very proud of it. In the spring, we do musicals, straight plays, classics. Um, obviously, in this class, I'll talk a lot about Much Ado About Nothing, which is a, a show that we did many years ago. This is Chicago. We recently performed Heathers. I think this spring, we are looking at Oedipus the King. So we have, a lot of it is just based on our small theater program, what people want to do, what um, where their strengths lie. And of course, we try to not do the same kind of show every semester. Even within the children's play, um, we try to diversify. Sometimes we do a musical, sometimes we do an older story, sometimes we do a newer story. So we try to expose students to all kinds of theatrical experiences and the growing shifts and changes uh, that are happening in the theater world. Um, this is a design class. It's very theoretical, which is why I feel mostly okay about doing it in online format. Um, you should receive a box full of supplies, um, and hopefully this is a hands-on class for you, right? And you're doing all these projects with hot glue and, and other things, but um, really the best way to be a good designer is hands-on experience. Getting into a theater, getting into 
a um, production and solving problems on the spot. We can talk about theoretically how to silk on a costume play with a light, um, but until you're in that theater and you have that silk, um, you know, all of that theoretical knowledge is not as useful as hands-on knowledge. So I've tried to, even though this is an online course, create a hands-on experience through your supplies and through your projects. And I hope, I hope, I hope that you are a theater major who has lots of theater experience. I've got to be honest, when I started um, studying theater, my mom was a music teacher, so I had done some musicals with her. I had done a few musicals with my high school, but I didn't have, being from rural middle Tennessee, I didn't have a ton of community theater experience, for example. Um, I'm plugged into my local community theater now, and I really think it's a great opportunity to learn. I wish I had done it as a child, um, but living out in Cowan. There just wasn't a lot of theater, right? Um, so some of us have to kind of make up for lost time and get out there and get that hands-on experience. Some of you are seasoned and have done more plays than I have, and that's awesome. So um, there you can see we're tying the uh, backdrop onto the batten. That's actually the cyclorama, which goes all the way on the last batten so that light can pick it up. If you've had introduction to theater, you probably heard about that one. Um, so we had a little snag this semester, and that is that the book it was already expensive, and it got crazy expensive. Um, and I could not in all conscience ask you to buy it. So <laughs> I've included a green copy there of the fifth edition. Um, so what does that mean? Uh, unfortunately, um, this has all been sort of last minute, so I apologize. Like in the lectures, it'll say page 532 and um, the page numbers do not line up exactly because it is an older edition. My lectures came from the 8th edition which is um, discontinued now they're on to the ninth edition um, but I've provided you with the fifth edition so I hope I hope I hope you're able to use the index and context clues and find the chapter that I'm in and follow along I do apologize this all happened um, at the last minute I just got the email um, from the bookstore saying it's no longer carried the eighth edition so I apologize um, we'll update this in the future but uh, right now we're making do with cheap books the good news about that is I have a desk copy for you to borrow for the course. Um, you do not have to buy a textbook. Um, if you would like to keep that textbook, get with me and we can figure something out. Um, why am I holding on to the Gillette textbook? Um, personally, I learned from this textbook and I still pull it out all the time. I love that it has makeup looks, costume looks. It's sort of a one um, one book manual for so much backstage work. And I really love that about this book. Also, if you go on to MTSU, um, they'll be using this book for some of their coursework as well. So for me, if you plan a life in theater, it's just a great handbook to have around. Um, of course, there are other fantastic, there's actually a backstage handbook, right? A little Navy book, um, lots of great books uh, about theater design and production, but this one, I just think is hands down the best. So um, I hope you will forgive our sort of page number drama and me trying to um, use an older edition in order for you to get the same content. It hasn't changed that much. Um, and so hopefully this desktop will suffice. Of course, if you want to go out and buy a ninth edition, edition, you are welcome to it. Um, I just couldn't in all good conscience um, charge you for that book. That's I can find very few differences between that and the older editions. So um, again, providing desk copies, if you will, please return those. Um, they are already well loved, so feel free to highlight or underline as you want. Um, I know I'm a paper and pen person myself. Okay, so what kind of assignments? I talked a little bit, teased there about you have your box full of supplies um, or your or it's on its way if you signed up for this at the last minute. Um, what are you, what is all that stuff in that box and what are you doing with it? <laughs> um, well, each project has a lecture from me, so I'm going to kind of do a broad overview, but of course we'll deep dive into it as the semester, as you listen to lectures. So don't try not to get too overwhelmed on the first day. Um, so we have basic 10 question quizzes. Um, those are over the content of the lectures. And so um, I do recommend that after before you take that quiz, that you do everything in the module and then take the quiz, right? Um, 
and so make sure that you're prepared to take the quiz. I know some of your classes allow two attempts. Um, unfortunately, as you probably know, cheating in online sections is rampant. So I only allow my students one chance at the quiz and I don't turn around and tell you the answers to the things that you missed. Um, because again, we're trying to protect the integrity of the course. Um, unfortunately, there are people who like to uh, create um, you know, cheats for other students and stuff by taking those answers that they got correctly um, or incorrectly giving giving the answers away basically is what I'm saying. So um, I, I understand that education is ever evolving and I want you to learn those quizzes are not worth a ton of points. They're basically just a little small way for me to hold you accountable and making sure that you're listening to the lectures because I know at least for me, sometimes it's easy to tune out and do other things when we're working from home as opposed to sitting in a classroom. Um, I, I should mention also that I did an entire certificate program online while I was working full time. So I have a lot of compassion for, um, you know, the struggles of trying to do things full time. Um, but I, I do hope that you will approach this with academic vigor, really challenge yourself. I know independent studies can be very difficult. Um, because you do have those deadlines, you don't have a whole class, you're not going to the place, um, but I hope that you hold yourself accountable. We'll have multiple discussion questions, um, and most of those involve some sort of deep reflection. Um, I don't necessarily require you to respond to each other. There's usually only one or two people in this independent study at a time, and so um, while I do w hope that you will introduce yourself to the other person and feedback and use their ideas, um, I, I do not anticipate that you'll have to do a whole lot of the trope of replying to two other people's discussion, blah, blah, blah. I just want to make sure you are engaged and responding to the assignments and helping each other like you would in a regular classroom. Um, so, of course, costuming is my area, so that's what I put the emphasis on for this course. Um, you'll pick, uh, you'll read a Midsummer Night's, not a Midsummer Night's Dream, sorry. You'll read Much Ado About Nothing, and um, I've also included a video version of that. You can find tons of video versions of that. It is a well-loved Shakespeare's play. Um, I still want to play Beatrice before um, I age out of that role, which is creeping along. I need to probably find some way to do it, but uh, just absolutely love that play. So for each costume design, you'll create a collage. Um, you'll write a little uh, write-up about it, and then you'll draw the, um, the finished costume. So I do admit that this is a technology-heavy class. You have to find ways to upload that collage, upload that drawing. Um, if you are at the Moore County campus and you see me on the regular basis, if you want help with that, I'd be happy to help you. If you're not, I recommend going to the library. Those librarians um, usually have scanners, for example, that they can scan it in for you so that you can then upload the file. Um, your phone is a great tool. If you need to upload it as HEIC, that's fine. But of course, I do prefer PDFs in the format of the file that you upload. Um, the collages, personally, I like to do a PowerPoint and then save it as a PDF. I think that's the more intuitive um, version of collaging for me. Um, if you are a big iPad person and you have a capture, a way to um, use technology in your drawing and stuff, of course I'm open to that. Uh, but just start a conversation with me about what's working for you, what isn't working for you. Um, if you're just an old-fashioned pen and pencil person, that's great too. No pressure. Um, I just want to make sure that you feel free to do your best um, and however that output comes is fine by me. So if you've ever had an acting addiction, acting addiction, Freudian slip, if you've ever had an acting addition of a play, um, and it's, you know, that kind of skinny, brightly colored, uh, usually in the very back, you can find a ground plan. And that's just a bird's eye view of the set um, of the initial performance, either on Broadway or the West End, or off Broadway. Um, and that ground plan helps inform the design. It's not mandated by the playwright or the um you know, producing organization, it's just a suggestion. But you'll be creating another ground plan for Much Ado About Nothing. So, um, and then 
for the set design, um, again, we'll be doing a collage. Now that could involve colors, it could involve textures, it could involve um, detail work. I wanna see a statement of how that collage relates to the models. The functional model is that white model um, just once you get it built but before you add any texture or color and then the production model is the finished model right and it has all the detail all of the pizzazz sorry i got the hiccups all of a sudden and then um we'll have a little sound design a little lighting design discussion question you're going to take um, gels that you have and project it with flashlights and kind of get a view for how does your production model interplay with your lights and give me three different uh, lighting design looks there. Now the goal of all these assignments is one big wonderful portfolio and that can help you get jobs. <laughs> I'm always conscious of what can help you get jobs. Um, my first production um, that I got to work on professionally was in Ohio, Tecumseh, um, outdoor drama. And I got that part um, as Martha Kenton, uh, 72 performances. Yes, yes, I do. It was my one and only line, right? I was marrying, got married on stage every night. Um, and uh, But part of the reason I got that job as an actor is because I was an actor slash technician right i was willing to sew in the costume shop i was willing to stay up at night and do the laundry um you know some of you might have to sweep the floor stage before you get to be on the stage um, we all have to be humble artists um, by the one and only road of labor and service and so i certainly hope that you um, have a diverse interest in theater i hope that this um, whets your appetite for how fun behind the stage can be a lot of actors um, a lot of beginning theater artists start with acting, right? That's all you really need for a theater experience as a performer and an audience. But when you get into the, all of the other design stuff, um, it really can empower you um, to be able to have a broader network of jobs. If you're ever looking for jobs in higher ed, for example, a lot of costuming jobs, a lot of set jobs, those are the, the needed skills, right? And then you can also teach acting and directing and all these other things. I don't, I'm realizing right now that this lecture sounds a little bit like design is the consolation prize. Please, please, please do not hear that. I have amazing designers in my life that this is their calling and what they love. Um, and I, I love costumes. I sit around and dream them up since the time I was in a sitting board in church drawing wedding dresses, right? Um, goes way back for me. I absolutely uh, love design. Um, but if you are someone who's coming into this design class saying, well, I'm primarily a performer, I'm just trying to, I hear that a lot, so I'm just trying to undercut that by saying, try to stay humble, try to apply yourself, um, try to do your best. Um, so every uh, module, I have a couple chapters in there. So like, of course, there's a costuming module, a design module, a sound, um, you know, lighting. Uh, I ask you to read the chapter in your textbook first, right? Go through, again, I'm sorry for the page number mix up, but um, make sure that you familiarize yourself with the text. Now that especially when you're watching my lectures over it, especially highlighting um, those terms that I hit on in the lectures and reaffirming it with the text in the book. Um, you know, there's usually a discussion question, not necessarily every time, but make sure you check that discussion board. I leave the discussions open all semester long, so you can do them whenever you um, want, as long as you get them done by the end of class. But I do recommend when it comes up in the content, that that's when you do it, because it, the context of what you're learning is what you need to reflect on. So I have some students who come in the first day and they say, hey, the discussion is all open. Let me just go ahead and do those. But they do it without any context for what we're working on in class. So I would discourage that. Wait until it comes up in the class and then go do those discussion board questions. Um, right, there's either a little written um, discussion, maybe an activity, a hands-on project in that module. But before you go and take that assessment, before you take that 10 question quiz, I have a terms checklist, right? Terms and concepts checklist. 
please, 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 before you take the quiz, make sure and look at every single one of those terms that you know what they mean and the context in which they are. That's going to give you the best preparation to take that assessment, right? So we have kind of a new problem <laughs> in um, academia, and that is artificial intelligence. I really expect you to have your own ideas. Now, do I expect you to reinvent the wheel? Absolutely not. I'll talk about my Much Ado About Nothing inspo coming from Kentucky. I went and saw and they had done a Western um, version of, of Much Ado. And so I said, hey, that's a great idea. You know, Motlow is a small theater program. We can't afford um, really elegant costumes a lot of the times, but Western costumes are pretty inexpensive. Um, it's part of the reason that Oklahoma, these shows get done a lot is because you can throw together the costumes um, with modern shopping in most cases. Um, and so you can be inspired by something, but please, please, please do not find a copy of a picture on the internet and tell me that it's your work. Please don't um, ask AI to generate an image and then turn it into me as your intellectual property. Um, I know it's tempting. You're busy. You have a lot on your plate. But this is a creativity class, right? It's part of the purpose of this um, gen ed curriculum, right, is that you learn to deeply think and creatively uh, cr create things, right? Um, it's just so uh, heartbreaking to me when I have students use technology in a cheating way when they're theater students, because that creativity, that muscle, you going around and showing that portfolio um, to try to get jobs, people are going to see if it's not really your work or if it steals from a major theater production shamelessly, just copying what they did. Um, people are going to see that. So please, please, please make sure you're applying yourself, you're addressing the assignments with academic rigor and integrity. Um, please don't cheat your way out of an education because it will really hurt yourself. And in academic circles around theater, Cheating creativity is one of the uh, seven deadly sins. So creativity is a skill. You may be saying to yourself, I'm not a good drawer. <laughs> That's why I gave you an entire sketch pad. Get drawn, right? <laughs> Just uh, put your finger. Now you can trace the forms that are provided and we talk about that. I'm not necessarily saying that this is a drawing class where you're graded on your ability to draw. Uh, we look at fantastic designers and a lot of them like Isaac Imraz they're drawing stick figures right it doesn't um, your idea is what I want to see right so don't um, sometimes and I say this in the costuming world all the time done is beautiful if it's finished congratulations right um, so uh, I understand the creative process can be frustrating right? You kind of, you start on it, you're super proud of it, and then you doubt yourself and it's trash, and then you're back up to being proud of it again, right? Um, but don't rush it. Take your time. Um, now is also a good time for me to mention safety. Uh, you know, I use a lot of hot glue, and I've provided you with hot glue. Uh, low temp, please try to keep it on that low temp so you don't burn yourself too bad. Go ahead and get a pencil and um, go ahead and sacrifice it to the hot glue gods because, you know, if you use the tip of that pencil rather than your finger, you're less likely to get burned. Um, unfortunately, when I taught high school, I had someone who had to go to the hospital and get stitches. <laughs> um, she was using an X-Acto knife um, and cut right through her finger. So please, please, please be careful with these X-Acto knives. If you have children in your home or pets, um, make sure that you always put that blade back and keep it out of reach of those vulnerable populations. Um, uh, your paints, all of that kind of thing. If you, again, are at the Moore County campus and you want to use... Um, the design room or the prop room or even one of the dressing rooms to work on your projects. I'm open to that because I know um, having all of those supplies in your home, if you have pets or small children, can be a liability. So um, I hope you're, what you're hearing from this is that you have a lot of freedom in these projects. You have um, a lot of choice. Um, hopefully I've given you inspirational assignments where you can challenge yourself and um, you can do it safely. I'm here to support you. I don't want this to cost you a ton of money. I don't want this to um, 
be, I don't expect you to be perfect at it, right? This is introduction. This is just you getting your feet wet on all things design. Uh, you know, you may be interested in one element of design, but I want you to take a stab at all of them because who knows, this could be your start to a new career path. And I would certainly be proud to introduce you to the world of theatrical design, as we say, is nice work if you can get it and you can get it if you try. So um, as always, thank you for listening.